here, this way. Let's put, this is the, just a hexagonal ring of the lattice. This Hamiltonian here, you only consider the hopping from here to here. This T1, no, whatever, doesn't matter. This T, and everywhere, and you will get this Dirac coin here. You don't have spin resolution. We assume, yeah, there's no spin. <coughs> spin doesn't matter, and for spin up and spin down, they're equivalent. However, suppose, yeah, you, if you consider hopping from here to here, Okay, not much change because this side and this side, they are perfect symmetry. But if you consider a hopping from here to here, for example, this position, for sure it will feel an electric field from this side because it's not balanced. They, they are too far, right? Here, this electric field, electron has a velocity here. This, velo this electric field is this direction. They are perpendicular in some case. And then, we just keep this formula, then we, it will generate a field out, outside. The effect of this field is means if a spin up electron hopping, it will feel lower energy. If a spin down, it will high energy, right? This means the system always, always already have some preference. It prefers spin up electron hopping, hopping uh, from here to here and here. If it spin down, it may prefer to this direction like you have a E field here, but a velocity here. Here, in this case, you inverse the velocity direction. You get a spin point inside. Then that already tell you your spin up like to hop in this way. Like in your spin up, like to hop in clockwise, anticlockwise, and spin down, hopping oppositely. And then from here, here what happened? Like Let's just repeat again. This second nearest neighbor hopping, this hopping here, it will feel the electric field. This electric field generate the smell of the coupling term. And then let's see what we are, what's the consequence in the band structure. Here, as I mentioned here, the hopping, it will feel the electric field locally in this position, or actually all this ridge, or this ridge. We typically just take th these positions. And uh, then it will have a special spin pre preference. Here, in this side, it's opposite. And actually, this idea, like these two most important reference, I think, you know, this classical paper. And here, then that means like uh, we will add a second nearest neighbor hopping term. This term will depend on spin and the hopping direction. Depends on spin means if spin up, hopping to this spin up is preferred. And then spin down to this spin down is also preferred. Otherwise, its energy will be higher. Therefore, here there's a term, this new IJ term. The IJ simply tell you like, uh, to identify is this direction hopping or opposite direction hopping. And uh, then, then nothing more. And here, this SZ, SZ alpha, SZ is simply the, the poly matrix for the spin. It's sigma Z to A2, <coughs> H bar over two there. And then, these two terms, most important is this new IJ and SZ term. This spin selective hopping, actually just means spin selective uh, hopping. And it will generate a gap at the Dirac point. And then, originally, graphene, we know the Dirac point, the semi-metal, now, formally, it becomes an insulator. And then, repeat again, how strong this term can be. Yeah. And science here, we see its source is from the electric field of this atom. Yeah. Uh, okay. Whatever you write. And uh, this complex simply means just to keep T2 as a real number. You can also include it inside the T2. And uh, because here, in this way, if we include the spin hopping, uh, this hopping number, they are not a real number anymore. They can be imaginary. Yeah, 
in this way just for convenience to make T2 a real number. And then here, oh, okay, see. Then since we see the source of this spin selective hopping is this electric field. Then the strength of the electric field is determines what kind of atom is here, right? If for graphene is carbon, it's super weak. Carbon, the Z number, Z, what, how large? So the number? Eight, eight or six? Six, I think six. <laughs> and uh, the, how, if there here is even stronger, like uh, if go to, we talked about mercury, gold, and others, it should if the material exists. Yeah. Unfortunately, not many honeycomb material exist this way. And about here, this example already tell you it should be quite a general in a kind of lattice. As long as you have some asymmetry with the electric field, the system will feel the spin. Although in the band structure, actually, suppose this band structure and even this band structure, every band, they are double degenerate. This field that double degenerate. They still feel the, the time reversal symmetry. Like a graphene, it has time reversal symmetry and it still have inversion symmetry. All the bands are double degenerate. But however, the spin, their spin, they are still like spin up and down. They still feel quite different. They just have the same energy. But it doesn't, doesn't mean they don't feel, some, feel the electric field. And here actually, this, actually this gap opening make a graphene to become a topological insulator. And uh, I will talk about, talk about graphene later. And, but this exactly tell you like the in like in the solids like as long as there are ma many atoms and they are in this lattice there are many possibility you can have an effective smell the company and uh, graphene is a typical example for a long time people believe people just assume it, this is negligible and uh, but indeed the size is negligible but it will really generate many interesting physics and this is another example. And uh, this is uh, uh, whether I have experiment result, no. This is an example about a typical zinc blend material. And uh, actually, it's a material, it's a Hoysler material, but you, you don't have to know, care about too much detail. It's a kind of ternary material. And it has same structure like this cubic, similar structure like a gallium arsenide. Uh, it's one 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 surface. One on one surface, as I said, like this zinc blend material on its one on one surface. And uh, in the experiment and the calculation, what I see here is the calculation result. There are some interesting surface states, like uh, this red band is mainly from the bismuth PZ orbital. And here you see when we when we close the smelter coupling, this band, just the one band, spin up and down degenerate. Then when we add smelter coupling, what we will get, actually, is the band will split. And now, let's do a little exercise. How do you know the surface? Oh, uh, simply like you check the wave function of these bands. You will see they only live on the surface. Yeah, they cr like they cross the bulk here in this region. Like oh here, the, the, the thickness is proportional to the surface projection. Yeah. Uh, this is surface system. Now, we, like, I, I don't want to really distinguish Rushbar or Dress House, right? Actually, their origin are similar, but they are Rushbar here, a typical Rushbar, but I will show you Rushbar is not enough. Yeah, right, right. And what we will have, as I said, like uh, this cubic material, if we look on the 111 surface, the diagonal surface, the surface, uh, we look from the top, actually the system is a simple triangular lattice.
believe this is a triangular and everywhere are uniform. And in experiments, we observe we consist with the experiment. On the top atom is B smooth. And what's the next layer? Then the second layer somewhere here, here, here. Oh, one, two, sorry. I have to keep the symmetry. It's this way. The red one, they are PT. Uh, the material is LU, PT, BI. And the LU layer is further below. The most important the outside is bismuth, triangle, pure triangle. And then the next, the PT form another triangle, just a, 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 little, a layer below there. And what we can do, like, simply we can write down the tight binding model for the triangle lattice first. This, well, in a lazy way, they are just first nearest neighbor hopping in the triangle lattice. There are, there are, there are strong chemical bonding. Yeah, suppose this is a triangle lattice, live on a bulk. This side is a bulk. They are connected by strong chemical bonding. This side is just a vacuum. And uh, then different from graphene is, like graphene is a honeycomb, just means this atom, there's no this atom. And we get it. From this one, simply what we will get, we will get a band structure for triangular lattice is this one, this PZ, is this way. And uh, there's no similar coupling, nothing more. And we can add a rush bar effect. We know this is surface system because this side is bulk, this side is vacuum, there's an electric field normalizing this way. And we can add the rush bar term. And uh, I just write a different way. What is here? Uh, this is here, sorry, here is a little complicated. This is the rush bar term in this lattice, <coughs> the, this lattice model. But here you will see this is a sigma, like, Maybe let's write it simple. Alpha dot sigma cross P. Let's just keep writing in the, in the way we are familiar. And add the rush bar. The rush bar here, if only the rush bar, what will happen actually is this one. This, is the, this red line is the band structure. And compare to the experimental ab initial, the main difference actually is the symmetry looks roughly okay, and but is at the cap point. There's no gap opening, no band gap opening. And uh, about in reality, you see there's a there's a gap here, and uh, rush bar give you the splitting of this band, the degeneracy, not very, roughly okay. But the main physics is what happened at the cap point here, and. Uh, then we need something a little more. And but why? Like, there might, might be something we ignored from the simple Rashba model. Rashba model simply tell you electron move in this plane, fill electric field out. And this electric field generates this term. And then a little more is, let, let's see. When electron hopping, here, we write this model, they are only first nearest neighbor hopping. We don't include more. Now, for graphene, we consider more, but here, there's no more. We just think about first nearest neighbor. Suppose it's a hopping is from here to here. Are there something related to this spin? Can anyone observe? Just from here, for any, any of them. Yeah. In a triangular lattice, we assume this hopping just uniform, but if we consider the second layer, this layer, yeah, actually they form strong chemical bonding. Actually this layer will generate an electric field here. It's not symmetry, not perfect symmetry. And this still makes the difference, then give you a spin selective hopping. That means to every direction, here actually you have a, you have a, the other layer here, you have another layer here. For every hopping, for every hopping, they are just not symmetry. Right? Because this field is here. And then that means when you clockwise or anti-clockwise hopping, 
the spin has a preference. And then we have to add a term, like similar to the graphene term. And the graphene term actually was first, here this term was first introduced by Hadan, then generalized in this paper by Kian and Milin in 2015. This is the first paper they proposed topological inscriptor. And here I just simply call this term a Lee term. And they simply, yeah, they're just hoping there are some asymmetry locally, then this lo local symmetry, like it give you the effective uh, spindle coupling term. And then this term, here you see there's also a new IGA term and a sigma xi, that's normal. And the new IGA simply define the preferred direction. And with that, and we will get this, just this mainly happens at the K point. This symmetry, this gap will open. Yeah, because of, because of this term. And uh, this is quite similar to graphene. Actually, graphene, where is this Dirac coin? This Dirac point. They are also at the K point. They have really similar symmetry. This similar symmetry is just because this, this like uh, I call it a Camille term, and this one, I can write it again. It's like SZ, and uh, it's related with. And uh, this term, they are similar. They're similar, like they have a similar form, and the lattice have quite a similar symmetry. Then that's why the most important physics happened at the K point. And then overall, whatever the system, how complicated it is, what kind of lattice, and uh, all something really simple happened in the atom, and uh, here, the mainly physics is, we just keep repeating, is here. There's an electric field. The, this field can be generalized. You can consider it from the general symmetry or even a local position near atom. And uh, the effectively, it generate this smell the coupling effect. Indeed, it's the really relativistic effect. And uh, you can simply think about the relative motion. You can feel there's a magnetic field then with this magnetic field <coughs> worked on the spin, then this is what you will get. And the spin of the coupling and the other related relativistic effect, I have to double repeat, is that like this p orbital contraction. Here, they are really different. They are really different from this one. And for some heavy elements, we should really pay attention. Like we think about mercury and gold and these heavy elements. But if you think about uh, really, usually a common lattice model, actually there's actually nothing beyond this picture. And uh, as long as you really go to the detail, the microscopically, to think of the electron hopping, how it feels, the surrounding, and whether it's symmetry, whether there's some additional electric field. And then I think now we, I may run out of my slides. I, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can if it's it if it lives on on, on a substrate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, however, the same only a Rushbar term can, can still not open this gap. Yeah. Uh, oh, you mean this one? Yeah. Uh, it's ab fully ab initial. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we at the same time we have photo emission result. You mean fully ab initial? Yeah. Uh, yeah, good question. In fully ab initial, actually, all the physics are hidden. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. exactly. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the reason why we, we write down this model and the fit step by step. Check the effect. So that model is the right one? No. Let's see. This is a fully ab initial calculation. This is an independent model. Just write it by hand. Yeah. And then we check how this model fit to the ab initial. So the red curve here is that 
Yeah, uh, yeah, the red, uh, yeah, yeah, the red line is from the model. Yeah, so, yeah. Thank you for asking. This one. Yeah, they are they are from different bands. Yeah, yeah. Like this model, like well, it's oversimplified. Let's see, there are some different bands here because they are mixed with the bug. In the model, yeah, we we just ignored many other effects. Uh, yeah, this one you mean? <laughs> yeah. Can you somehow estimate why this should be large? Because I mean the rest mass is something negative from both. Uh what do you mean which should be large? This the other Z. No the other two. No, because the denominator yeah. is something like negative from both, right? Uh negative for what? Excuse me. Oh, uh, can you repeat your question? M here. Here, M. M is very quite small. Electron mass, just. 10 minus 31. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mass, just quite small. But, but is it like mega electron volt? Mega electron volt? No. No, this term is usually in the order of 10 milliEV to, to 100 milliEV. Oh, they're huge. Yeah, that's usually like it means this electric field, this field from the out to the vacuum uh, is strong, but not, not that crazily strong. Compare. I don't mean the denominator. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, here, no, no. This, I think, is a reasonable number. Yeah, yeah. No, not huge. But in the order of 10 milli or 100 milli EV, let's say this way. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I mean total alpha. Yeah. But maybe we can just try by hand, I think. It's not very surprising. C squared give you 1016. M give you 10 minus 31. And about here, G mu B, they are also in a small number. Just the electron spin. I, I'm not sure, like for Galen Arsenide, where is the polar axis? I assume it should be 111. No. No? So, and strain Galen Arsenide does mm. not have, so it's together electric, but it's not mm. ironic. Oh, I see. So you have mm. to strain it. Oh, I see, I see. Break the further the symmetry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, this one, let's see. Uh, the polarization is still kind of microscopic polarization, a kind of. Here, I just want to see as long as you locally have some dipole, that's enough. Yeah. They don't have to be accumulated to some way. Yeah, more question? Oh, really? All the, all the notes can be well written? <laughs> How much time do we have? 
Half hour more milk, yeah. Good. I. Yeah. Ah. The digital degeneracy. Yes. Uh, so somehow the, the screen also Yeah, that the means, yeah. E even they are not split, but they feel the lattice. Yeah, they, f they have a difference. Yeah, when, when they move, they, they, they are different. This one. Ah, oh. very good question. Uh, let's see, very good question. Actually, for the this kind of system, what has been started, were quite quite extensively, and uh, one observation is now we, we we just look at one from the surface first. If it's polarized in this way, in the center, here this is the gamma point. This is a positive chi minus chi. Uh, this is, suppose this is just a parabolic band. This is a Fermi surface, it's this one. And uh, in a material, suppose we apply a little electric field. And in the textbook, it will tell you if you apply electric field in this way. And then you will generate some, like there will be a little more electric in this direction, but a little less in this direction. Right? That means your Fermi surface actually has some shift. That means your Fermi surface will be yeah, a tiny shift, but I just pl plot it large. Yeah. First, you, are, you observe is there are more electrons moving to the left. This is the velocity. Then there are more, since this symmetry is breaking, left and right moving, they're not equal, then you have a net current. You get this current. This is a conducting. No, no surprise. This is a electrons, a metal start to conducting. And then, if you observe here, from here, we we know, we, if you count all the spin up and electrons, they are they always cancel each other, right? You have up and down. Their density will always equal. However, in this way, since you make a small shift, equal simply means. There are one right, yeah, equal simply means in the momentum you have a chi move to the right, then in this point you have exactly the same electron moving to the left. And however, you break the symmetry of chi. This part you have positive chi, this part you have minus chi. You have more electron move to the left. Then your total electron, total polarization will be down because you have more electron move to the left and they are polarized. This means, as we said, spin and momentum, they are locked. You put more, electron, more momentum in this side, then you, at the same time you push more electron in this side. Then your total system will generate a very small spin polarization. That means, like, your, elect your system at the beginning, there's no, totally no magnetic uh, impurity or doping there, but as long as you pass through the current, dynamically, your system is being polarized. And well, this polarization is, is usually very weak. And, uh, but however, uh, people, yeah, people even observe in some system, this spin polarization can generate an effect if you can design an interface. Uh, the, like a ferro, you pick, put a ferromagnetic material together with here. If their spin polarization are opposite, you pass enough current through, then you can flip this magnetic layer, like from here to parallel. And uh, this is a, a device called spin orbit torque. Uh, just a smaller coupling generate this polarization, this polarization, like make a rotation of this magnetic moment. Um, this is actually one very important uh, application. 
And the second is there's something. This band structure, and also people mentioned actually, this point, they're just a crossing point. It's quite different from others. And uh, yeah, I think you, you will learn soon from the very first lecture. And uh, here actually this point is a Dirac point. There, there will be strong barrier face there. And uh, <coughs> this point actually is very similar to a topological insulator point. Just, if you just observe locally, they are equivalent. And just there, these bands in the end will go up. But topological insulator just is going to a different direction related with here. And about the local physics, they could be very similar. Because topological insulator is from a surface. It's chiral. It's chirally rotate. It's the same. And uh, this is a kind of reason before people observe this Rashba system. Oh, by the way, here, when I talk about this spin polarization, I only use one Fermi surface, right? But actually, there are two rings. Two rings simply, here, the inner ring is smaller. The inner ring generates an opposite polarization. One opposite polarization. But because it's smaller, its carrier density is small, then the total polarization is still follow this larger ring. And in this sense, they are not very different. And before people study about this Rashba system for the spin orbital torque application, now it's not a surprise people start thinking topological insulator have only one ring and uh, to use it for the same purpose. Uh, yeah, there are also others. If we go beyond, there will be, like in a 1D, this Rashba system, like you apply a magnetic field, you break chamberal symmetry, actually. You will gap this point and you get a single Fermi surface, and this, uh, then use this Fermi surface. Together with superconductivity, you can realize a marginal Fermi, and uh, this is uh, talked in the topological field, but we don't have to go to that much detail. Uh, but here, actually, in that proposal, important of Rashba is just split the degeneracy of spin, Re reduce, <coughs> reduce the degeneracy. Mm -hmm. Are good questions? Are there more?